Now it's my deep honor to introduce a leader, not just in this organization, but in a variety of important civic initiatives and Houston-based programs. He has a passion for literacy, born from being an avid reader, which led to his chairmanship of the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation. All of this is why he is so excited about the Read Across the Globe Challenge that will shine a spotlight on the joy, wonder, and importance of reading. Please join me in welcoming the chairman of Points of Light, Mr. Neil Bush. There's a neon light. Oh, thank you very much. That was awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Joaquin Castro, for those inspiring words and for sharing your family's culture of service um, and for your service to our country. So let's hear it one more time. He just walked off. Let's hear it one more time for a bright, bright young star. I am truly honored to be chairman of Points of Light. I'm, ch I'm honored to serve and to have such a, a strong team of leaders led by uh, Tracy Hoover and a deep bench of amazing talent and to work with such an outstanding board. And I'm especially honored to carry the legacy of the man I love more than anyone who happens to be here right here, my father George, Pres <laughs> President George Herbert Walker Bush. Okay. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, and, uh, he and my mom, my mom would give you the old cut it off sign by now. He and my mom slipped quietly in and I couldn't let the moment go by. Um, so on behalf of my mother, my father, the, the Points of Light team, I welcome you all to our beautiful hometown of Houston, Texas. Thank you for coming from far and near to join us. Every year, and Tracy hinted at this, but every year we organize a service project. And this year we're in Texas, so in typical Texas style, we went big. At 8, 8 o'clock this morning, we started the 24-hour clock around the globe in an effort to break the Guinness Book of World Records for the most children read to by adults. This project has been really awesome. We've used it in Houston to raise awareness of our city's um, literacy crisis and to introduce thousands of volunteers to elementary schools, so we've already won. The logistics around this record-breaking effort are breathtaking. The current record is 238,000 kids. Our goal is 300,000 kids. So consider this, only one adult can read to no more than 35 kids at a time. Um, and so we have to read to the kids a minimum of 30 minutes with witnesses and photographers to verify the activity. <laughs> and we have to read the same book. It is an amazing undertaking. The book we are reading as Farmer Will Allen in The Growing Table. It's an amazing story, uh, service kind of focused story. And while Houston has been at the epicenter of this activity, this effort has truly gone viral. There are over 460 organizations participating globally in 26 countries across 17 time zones. I'm just And when, when the vote came, by the way, on what um, the, the service project would be, I raised my hand for literacy in honor of my mother, <laughs> who's, been a, who's been a long, who's devoted her philanthropic life in, um, in helping make America more literate and to break the intergenerational cycle of low literacy. So thank you, Mom. <laughs> So I want to thank, in order to help achieve this amazing record, we need to thank the Volunteer Center Network for spreading the word globally. Uh, we want to thank our pro bono partners, Deloitte, for the logistical support. Dicer provided PR support. Thanks to the amazing teams from Points of Light, from the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation, Volunteer Houston, Dollar General Literacy Foundation, and Jumpstart, and to the hundreds of organizations that participated. And thanks to each of you that played a role this morning reading to a kid in one of our Houston area schools. What an inspiring way to kick off our conference. So thank you. With politics becoming more and more partisan, 
uh, with religious animus and racial strife on the rise and political correctness being thrown to the wind, isn't it nice to come to our conference where leaders from volunteer centers, businesses, AmeriCorps alum, nonprofits, the government sectors convene, where people leave their differences of race, income, gender, politics, religion, and geography at the door. And, we're, and where we come in here, where we come in here un, united in service. It's not just a slogan. Service really does unite. 25 years ago, when Points of Light was founded, 30 million Americans were volunteering. My father observed at that time that for every problem in America, there is a solution playing out somewhere. He referred to the thousands of organizations and the millions of volunteers that powered them as Points of Light. He had a vision to create the organization Points of Light to inspire, equip, and mobilize more people to find their calling. He challenged us all by saying that any definition of a successful life must include service to others. And Points of Light has become a movement. And each and every one of you in this room is a point of light in that movement. Today, 64 million Americans serve every year. There's more corporate workplace service, more youth service, more faith service, more pro bono and skills-based service. There are more AmeriCorps and VISTA members, more veterans, retirees, Rotarians and Junior League members. More people are serving more often and they're serving longer. Volunteerism and service has become deeply rooted in our culture and is becoming our proudest export. And while it's awesome to see the nation's capacity for vital services grow, and it's great to see all the good that's coming from it, no doubt great good is coming from it, to me personally, it's frustrating to see serious social problems persist. And so as a movement, we've got to move away from working in silos, move away from the simple framework of more people serving more hours to a new model that ensures higher impact. We need to advocate for acting strategically, collectively, and with urgency. And I'm proud to report that the people of Houston are rising to address one of our nation's, one of our city's most pressing human rights issues. If you agree that every kid is born with the same bright-eyed potential, this, that they're born with a God-given potential to learn, then you must agree that every kid that slips through the cracks suffers from the injustice of the loss of human potential. Low literacy and the lack of education are the ball and chains that perpetuates poverty. Tragically, too many in Houston, too many kids in Houston live in poverty. They hear fewer words. They have no home libraries. It's no wonder that 60% of Houston area kids enter kindergarten ill prepared to learn. Sadly, too many kids fail the third grade reading test and are put firmly on a path to dropping out of school and entering the juvenile justice system and too many adults are functionally illiterate. The statistics related to the literacy crisis in Houston are so startling that a coalition, the Early Matters Coalition, representing a broad spectrum of critical stakeholders, schools, nonprofits, childcare and health providers, businesses, experts in early learning and faith institutions, are all working in harmony and with urgency to develop goals, strategies and metrics with the overall collective goal of having every student read at or above grade level by the end of third grade. Helping all kids learn to read so they can read to learn and breaking the intergenerational cycle of low literacy are the first critical steps needed to end the cycle of poverty. And the intense focus here in Houston with the community buy-in will no doubt move the needle. Best practices are being found and scaled. Government policies and education systems are being changed. Resources are flowing. Kids' lives from birth through third grade are being enriched. This citywide work is complemented with neighborhood coalitions, implementing the overall strategies with a laser focus to prove up bright spots that can be replicated. Our great city is uniting. Houstonians are exercising the ultimate democratic power. We're not waiting for a golden bullet. We're taking charge, united around the expectation 
that kids can and will rise, that neighborhoods will come back, and that the problems that plague this city will dissipate. So I urge all of you to continue to do the great work you are doing. Thanks for being bright points of light in the Points of Light movement. Continue to find ways to help wonderful organizations increase their capacity for their services through effective use of volunteers. And let's pledge together to take the service movement to the next level by advocating approaches that bring communities together for high impact. Let's find ways to collaborate, to work collectively, to create a sense of urgency around the issue that drives your passion. Let's not settle for status quo. Let's not wait for government to solve our problems. Let's take things into our own hands. Our movement needs to be the catalyst that activates America's great democracy and unites this nation in service. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.